Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Almighty. Hallelujah. God is awesome, isn't he? Yes, the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We love you. We love you, Father. We love you tonight. I just want to talk to the saints of God just not long. You guys know I don't usually hold you too long. So, But I do want to discuss something that uh, Aaron Burton, oh my goodness, bless you, my brother. Love you, man. Hallelujah. Praise God for all the people coming on. Odetta, how you doing? Sister Sarah Valoria, bless you, cuz. Bless you, my sister. Bless you, Odetta. I love you. Pablo, Enrique, Andrean. Shalom, my brother. All right. Chavantha Miller, love you, sis. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Brother Stephen, how you doing, my brother? My Italian brother. <laughs> Bless you all. I love y'all. Cleveland Pete Baker, love you, young man. Love you. I love what you're doing, man. I appreciate you. Your mom and dad were my mentors years ago, and I appreciate you for watching. Bless you, Sister Julie. Thank you all for coming on. I, um, I want to talk about something tonight. I know a few more people may come on. I might not get to speak to you, but I will acknowledge you later. Shalom, Pablo. Bless you, man. So as people come on, I might not acknowledge you, but I will acknowledge you later. And I just want to, uh, I want to say that, uh, I want to say that we have to understand that in, in doing these videos, you're going to have people to disagree with you. Let me give you some wisdom here. Let me give you some wisdom here. Carolyn Whitty says, I know it's been many years. I remember meeting you with Apostle Bradshaw. Hey, Apostle G.E. Bradshaw, let me tell you something. Apostle G.E. Bradshaw picked me up in the early 90s when I thought I was doing something. Apostle Bradshaw came along and he mentored me. Apostle Bradshaw would be my mentor. That brother mentored me and he's an apostle of mine forever. Apostle Gordon Bradshaw. Bless you, Carolyn Whitty, for that. My brother Claude is on. Bless you, Claude. I love you. Praise God. Love all the people of God. Apostle Manita Archie. I was going to mention your name tonight. So, matter of fact, I still am. But you're on here. I wasn't expecting to see you tonight. Sierra. How you doing, Sierra? Oh, my baby girl. Bless you all. Love you all. Love you all. Nephew Rob. My cousin Pamela. All right. Praise God. I might not get to acknowledge you all. However, what I want to do tonight, I want to talk about something. Pastor Brian, bless you, man. I keep saying I'm not going to acknowledge you all, but it just gives me joy to see people coming on, okay? But I want to talk about something tonight. I want to do what I can to end this attack against women, all right? Now, I know I can't end it, and I know you're going to have people coming on, disagreeing with you, and people are going to come on and say what they want to say. Folks, let me give you some wisdom. Good evening. Shalom, Pastor Stallings. Let me give you some wisdom. Don't argue with people on Facebook. You know, you can attack me all you want to. One thing I'm not going to do is attack back. Attacking back is what I refuse to do. Elijah, bless you, man. Sorry about your dad. Love you, brother. I don't know if you remember me or not from way back in the day. You lived, used to live across the street from my grandparents in Rockford, Illinois. And I, I, I remember your dad, man. Sorry about your dad. But saints, don't fight back. When people come on and they begin to criticize you, what you're doing, what you're saying, don't have a Facebook argument because Facebook is a platform for everybody in the world. And I'm going to tell you something. Let me give you a little note here. Hey, Cousin Bruce, love you, brother. Good to see you, cuz. Give you a little note here. Facebook is a platform for the whole world. It's a platform for all the wise people, and it's a platform... For all the idiots, don't forget that. It's a platform for all the good people. And it's a platform for all the evil people. Don't forget that. It's a platform for the saints. And it's a platform for sinners. Don't forget that. So when someone comes on to your video or your post and they criticize you, don't get a hair up your butt. Don't get a stick up your butt. Don't get all bad. Just say I love you. Just say I love you. And keep doing what you're doing. All right? Nehemiah said, I'm doing a great work. I can't come down. So don't come down to people's level. When folk disagree, hey, disagreement is a part of life. When people disagree, don't come down to their level, okay? Just keep doing what you're doing. Just keep it moving. As, as my uh, sister-in-law Michelle used to say, just keep it moving, all right? So now, saints, I want to talk to you tonight because 
whether you believe it or not, whether you believe it or not, in this day and age, 2018, whether you believe it or not, there are still preachers who believe that women cannot preach. Would you believe that? There are still preachers who preach against women. They don't preach against women preachers. They preach against women. You heard me. Now, they say they preach against women preachers, but no, you listen to them. You listen to these brothers, and these brothers have a problem with women. They don't just have a problem with women preaching. They got a problem with women. If you listen to them, how they talk, their attitude, their spirit, it's not against women preaching. They got a problem with women, period. Any kind of woman in authority anywhere, they just got a problem with women. So I want to do, I want to share with you some of the things that God has revealed to me concerning this woman preacher issue. And, uh, and, and, and I know the scripture said let the women keep silent in the churches. So let me see if I can shut y'all down and get you silent tonight. All right. Let's see how that works out. OK. Now, notice, notice, let's start out in Ephesians chapter four. In Ephesians chapter four, if you got your Bible, open up to Ephesians chapter four. In the King James Version, I'll be reading all my scriptures from the King James Version, and I just want to try to bring clarity to the body of Christ, all right? I know you got your brothers. If you know somebody who don't believe in women preachers, send this video to them, because they can attack me all they want to, because I do not attack back. So they can bring all this stuff, attack me all you want. But what I will do, I'll inbox you, I'll give you my phone number, oh yeah, and we can talk. We can have a conversation. See, I don't mind doing that. I don't mind talking to people on the phone. But I ain't going to have no public Facebook argument being an embarrassment to the body of Christ. That I refuse to do. Okay? So go to Ephesians chapter 4. And let's get this party started. Party over here. Ephesians chapter 4. And verse, I want to start at verse 8. Listen to the scriptures. I want you to follow me. And you got to read the scripture with understanding. Okay? I call it reading the scripture hermeneutically. You got to read it hermeneutically. The scripture said, uh, Paul told Timothy to rightly divide the word. Hey, Sade, sweetheart, Ben, love you, daughter. He said, rightly divide the word. Thank you, Brother John. That's just what I'm going to do, too. Teach it. Amen, Sister Carolyn. Rightly divide the word. All right? He told him to rightly divide the word. Now, when you rightly divide the word, what you do is you make the word, you cut it straight. You make a straight cut in the word, and you divide the word perfectly. Perfectly. So rightly dividing the word is what we want to do tonight. Ephesians chapter 4, start at verse 8. Listen to what he says. Paul says, Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. Let that soak in, people of God. He gave gifts unto who? Men. M-E-N. That's what the Bible says, right? Look in your Bible. See that it say that in Ephesians 4 and 8. He gave gifts unto men. That's what the Bible says. So now if he gave gifts unto men, don't, wouldn't that exclude women? If he gave gifts unto men, then that should surely exclude women. Mother Barnett, bless you. I love you. I love you. I bow to you, mother. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. He gave gifts unto men. Now, if he gave gifts unto men, shouldn't that exclude women? Now, you got, that's Ephesians 4 and 8. All right, but I want to explain this to you. Hear this in the spirit. Verse 9 and 10 are the whole two verses are in parentheses, okay? So Paul is parenthetically speaking in verse 9 and 10. Y'all like that? Parenthetically speaking. I get to use big words every now and then. So I learned that from uh, Pastor Body Thompson, my assistant pastor, parenthetically speaking. Now look, in verse 9 it says, Now that he descended on high is the same also that descended first to the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fulfill all things. Now the scripture says, Scripture says, and he gave some apostles. Look at verse 8. He gave gifts unto men. The gifts that he gave is written in verse 11. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. That's the gift that's referenced in Ephesians 4 and 8. Okay? But notice it said, he gave gifts unto men. Now, the problem is, people of God, that we, we are... We haven't been rightly dividing the word. We've been wrongly dividing the word. Or we've been divisive with the word. Greetings, Deborah. Love you, sis. We've been divisive with the word, not dividing the word. And so what I mean by divisive is you take the word of God and you form it to fit your own opinion. Hello, Brenda Carroll. God bless you, apostle. Good to see you. Now, you take the word of God divisively. You take it to fit your own opinion. That's not how God's word was intent to be um, intent to be divided or intent 
to be instructed. You don't take the word and make it fit your opinion. Your opinion got to drop and the word of God got to be preeminent. The scripture said here, he gave gifts unto men. Ephesians 4 and 8. He gave gifts unto who? Men. Now, if he gave gifts unto men, that makes it sound like women are excluded. But the problem is, here's the major issue, people. Here's the major issue. Y'all remember the movie uh, Full Metal Jacket? The sergeant said, what's your major malfunction? Well, I'm going to give you the major malfunction right now. The major malfunction is when the scripture said he gave gifts unto men. Guess what, folks? This wasn't written in Chicago. Wasn't written in St. Louis. Wasn't even written in Phoenix, Arizona. Wasn't written in Madison, Wisconsin, Apostle Carroll. It wasn't written in Oklahoma. The word of God was written in Israel. It was written in Israel, in the Holy Land. And when it was written, it wasn't written in the King's English. What we're reading is the 1611 edition of the King James Version of the Bible. Now, if you see a car accident and two or three people see that accident, everybody can give their version of the accident. This is King James's English version of the scriptures. So that word men was originally written in Aramaic Greek. All right. Written in Aramaic and written in Greek because the, 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 the transition of the scripture intellectually speaking. And uh, I would say the, the, the written versions of the scripture, Hebrew, Aramaic, uh, Greek. Latin, English, and so on. So when the scripture said he gave gifts unto men, it wasn't just talking about gender-wise, because that word men there is a Greek word, anthropos. All oh, brothers, hold on to your belt. The word, the Greek word for men there is anthropos. And the word anthropos is not a sexual word. The word anthropos means human beings. He gave gifts unto human beings. Now the Greek word that means man is the word aner. The word aner in the Greek means man. It has to do with a scrotum. I'm sorry I had to say it. It has to do with a scrotum because it's a reference to a sexual gender. But the word anthropos has no reference to a sexual gender. He gave gifts unto men, which essentially written in the original language meant he gave gifts unto human beings. Selah. So if he gave gifts unto human beings, then what was those gifts that he gave? Verse 11 tells us he gave some apostles, human being apostles, some prophets, human prophets, some uh, evangelists, human evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, human being pastors and teachers. Hello, saints of God. He gave those gifts to humans, not to men only. So people want to argue and struggle. They say, well, a woman can't be a preacher. A woman can't do this. She can't do that. Help us, Father. How long are we going to struggle over these things because we're insecure? Any brother who talks about what a woman can't do, he has some secret insecurity somewhere. Would you care if a woman laid hands on you and got you healed or a man laid hands on you and got you healed? Would it bother you? Let me tell you something, folks. If I'm sick and I need healing and there's a woman coming to lay hands on me, I'm not going to say, no, 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 you're just a woman. You just back down. I'm not going to do that. Stand down. You're just a, no, no. If I am lost and I'm on drugs and I'm out in the world and there's a woman preaching like what happened to me in 1979, 1980, the night I got saved, my spiritual mother, Apostle LeVon Hawkins was preaching that night and I didn't believe in women preachers, but I was in a position where I needed to be saved and that woman was preaching and I went up and fell on my knees and I grabbed her husband by his past leg and I said, I want to be saved. And Evangelist Hawkins led me to the Lord. Now, did I care that it was a woman? No, I just needed to be saved. All right? That's just one verse. That's Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to calm down here. Let me calm down. How about that? Calm. Okay. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 through 11. All right? So now, that shows that when he said he gave gifts unto men, that's not a reference to a gender or a sexual gender. It's a reference to human beings. So stop it. Can a woman be an apostle? Well, is she a human being? If she's not a human, she can't be an apostle. So if you know any people who are humans, then they have a right to be an apostle, right? If you know anybody who's a human being, they could be a pastor, evangelist, prophet, teacher, or an apostle, anything in the fivefold, if they're human. If they're not human, then we got issues with them, okay? All right, let's check out some more scriptures here. We ain't done. We're going to check out some more scriptures here. That was Ephesians 4, verse 8 through 11. And Apostle Marnita Archie, I don't know if you're still on, but Apostle Marnita Archie is a very powerful woman of God. I've never heard her, I've never heard her make an excuse 
for her apostleship or make an excuse for her being a woman preaching. Never heard her do that, all right? And then, I mean, Mother Ada Price, some of y'all don't know her. When I first got saved back in 1979, 1980, when I first got saved, Mother Ada Price, was the, this, this woman would preach the gospel. I mean, she would preach up a storm, never make an excuse about being a woman. Apostle Marie Mosley, she's right out here in the East Valley where I live at. Apostle Mosley, preach, teach, preach, reach, whatever she does, I've never, never heard of uh, make an excuse. Apostle Vera Cole, uh, I mean, Apostle Marina Archie, never heard of make an excuse. We even got pastors in our church. Bless you, Apostle, you're watching. We, we, we even got pastors in our church, Pastor Rochelle Thompson, uh, Pastor Hazel McDonald, Prophet Misha. I mean, these are women of God who are moved and led by the Spirit of God, okay? They don't make excuses for their gender because they don't have to. But oh, we're going to get a little better with it. We're going to get a little better with it. Let's go to another verse. All right, we're going to get deep with it here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 14. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Another one to show. Ephesians 4, 8 through 11, what we just read. Now we're going to 1 Corinthians 14, 34. It's going to get nitty gritty. Oh, it's going to get nitty gritty. Y'all seen Dave Chappelle, our undercover brother, he said it's going to be nasty. So it's going to be nasty, saints. You better put your seatbelt on. Let's go see what 1 Corinthians 14. I'm turning to it. I'm going to it. Because we need this explained. The body of Christ needs this information. And I'm just willing to give it to them. All right. First Corinthians chapter 14. And we're going to start at verse uh, 34. Okay. Listen closely, people, to the word of God. Rightly divide the word of truth. All right. Rightly divide the word of truth. Don't just make the word of God fit your interpretation. Drop your interpretation and hear what the word is saying. 1 Corinthians 14, I'm going to start at verse 34, okay? Hey, cousin, Velma, I love you, love you, cuz. Apostle Brandy Coleman said, teach, apostle. Yes, ma'am, that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, now, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34, is a scripture that people use to try to say that Paul said women can't preach. Now, I know a lot of people, if you got a problem with women preachers, you better turn this thing off because I'm getting ready to hit you hard, and I, I'm going to hit you with love. I ain't going to punch you, I'm going to just... Touch you with love, all right? Just a touch of love. First Corinthians 14. The Bible says plainly, people, it's in my Bible and it's in your Bible. First Corinthians 14, 34. Very plain verse. It says, let your women keep silence in the churches. Yes, King James Version. That's what it says. And it says, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, for they are commanded to be obedient, as also says the law. Verse 35 says, 35 gets even more technical. Verse 35 says, and if they will learn anything, you listen here, you sister, you, you think you call to preach. If they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Because it's a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Oh, yes, I'm in the book now. Hallelujah. Can y'all hear that Hammond B3 behind me? I'm getting ready to squall. Let me read it again. It says, let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law. And if they learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. It's a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Oh, Lord, I just read it. Hallelujah. Come on now. That's the word. All right? Now, we just read this in the scriptures. So how do you get around this? It's right there in the word of God, apostle. You're looking at it. People, rightly divide the word. Don't be divisive with the word. Divide the scripture. Orthotomeo. Say that word with me. Orthotomeo. Orthotomeo. That's what Paul told Timothy to do. Rightly divide the word. Orthotomeo. All right. Paul was in prison. And when Paul was in prison, the church would write and ask him questions. All right. You ever read 1 Corinthians chapter 5? Let me give you a little tidbit here. 1 Corinthians ain't even 1 Corinthians. Come on, Bible scholars, get with a brother. 1 Corinthians ain't even 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians ain't even 2 Corinthians. How you like them apples? 1 Corinthians is really 2 Corinthians. And 2 Corinthians is really 3 Corinthians. The first book of Corinthians was lost by Priscilla and Aquila. They didn't even get to Corinth because they lost it on the way. So Paul wrote another book to the Corinthians, which we call 1 Corinthians, but it's actually 2 Corinthians. I decided I'd throw that in there just for you Bible scholars, okay? Now, 
Paul was in prison, they'd write Paul questions and they'd ask him to answer these questions. And Paul would write back and give them the answer. Remember 1 Corinthians chapter 5? If they love God, they'll obey his instructions. Come on, Antonio, I hear you, brother. In 1 Corinthians 5, Paul said that there's, it's been rumored among you that there is a guy who's sleeping with his stepmother. And Paul said, I'm not there, but I'm judging as though I were. How did Paul know that? How did Paul have that information? Well, Paul got that information because they wrote to him in prison and Paul would write back and he would answer them. Y'all feel that? If I'm in prison and you write me, I'm going to write you back. Now, 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Let me read it one more time, just for good measure, just for all the brothers who are listening. All the brothers stand up and salute as I read this scripture. Let the women keep silent in the churches, not permitted unto them to speak, but they're commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law. And if they'll learn anything, now, what if they ain't married? Or what if they're not married? I will deal with that later. If they'll learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. However, let's keep reading. When you learn hermeneutics, you'll find out sometimes you got to keep right on reading. So let's keep reading. That's 14, 1 Corinthians 14, 34 and 35. The first word in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 36. What's the first word? If you follow me, type it. What's the first word? The first word in verse 36 is what? With a question mark. Somebody type that. Type what? With a question mark. Because that's the first word. That's the first word in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 36. After Paul quotes this thing, they send Paul this question. You can actually find this writing. You can actually find this writing in the Judaizer handbook. Where they made their own customs and their own laws. And the Judaizers, some of y'all know who the Judaizers are. They would fall behind Paul and they would try to chop down everything that Paul taught. All right? The Judaizers would go behind Paul and they would try to kill everything he taught. Type that what with a question mark. So, so now Paul says what with a question mark. Let your women keep silent. What? Look what else he says. He says, came the word of God out from you? Paul said, did you create the word? Did you create this word? He said, or came it unto you only? And Paul said, was the word of God written to you only? And look what he says in verse 37. He says, if any man think himself to be spiritual or a prophet, let him acknowledge the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Paul said, I didn't write this. Paul said, I didn't write this. He said, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Look at verse 38. But if any man want to be ignorant, Paul said, let him be a fool. You want to be a fool? Paul said, let the man be a fool. Look at verse 39. He said, wherefore, brethren, covet the prophesy. Forbid not to speak with tongues. And verse 40 says, let all things be done decently and in order. Y'all feel that? So Paul wasn't saying women couldn't preach people. Rightly divide the word of God. Paul is repeating what was written to him and then he's instructing how to conduct yourself with what knowledge or what letters or what information you have received. Verse 36, Paul said, what? Paul said, this ain't my teaching. What are you talking about? Let your women keep silent. Did the word of God originate from you? Was it written to you only? If any man want to be a prophet or spiritual, acknowledge what I teach. That's what Paul said. Oh, you better read it again, read it again, read it again. Paul said, this is not my teaching. How y'all like them apples? Hallelujah. All right, let's go to the next verse. Let's go to the next verse. Just in case that ain't good enough for you, we got more. All right? First Timothy chapter 2. Turn there if you're following with me. I'm trying to do this as expeditiously as possible. First Timothy chapter 2. And uh, let's see, we're going to start about verse, uh, let's see, let's see. Y'all learning anything? If you're learning some type, I'm learning something. All right, I want to know if I'm helping you. If I'm helping you, type that. Type, I'm learning something tonight. Type that. I'm learning something tonight. I want to know if I'm helping you. I want to make sure I'm helping you tonight. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, chapter 2. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy, chapter 2. Let me get there on my electronic Bible. All right, 1 Timothy, chapter 2. I've made it to 1 Timothy, chapter 2. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 reads like this. We're going to go down to verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Okay? Here's what it says. Hear the word of God. Are you learning something tonight? Hear the word of God. It says, let 
the woman learn in silence. Y'all hear this? Let the woman learn how in silence. Third day the mouthpiece. Hey, son, how you doing? Let the woman learn in silence. Oh, that sound good, don't it, brother? Why don't y'all brother salute? <laughs> Let the woman learn in silence. All right? So now, the word silence is, the word silence don't mean just to shut up. Okay? We think the word silence means to shut up. The word silence is, in the Greek, you say, husekia. Husekia. Which means, don't mean to be silent like not talking. Husekia means to be still and to be reverent. You know, quiet. A quiet spirit, a sound spirit. I'll explain that to you in a few minutes, okay? First Corinthians, thank you, Julie, for putting them scriptures on there. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate that. All right? First Corinthians 2.11. So let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Paul says, here it is. Come on, people. First Corinthians 2, 1 Timothy 2.12. I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed and not Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in a transgression. Notwithstanding, she can be saved and childbearing if she continue in faith, charity, and holiness. Now, so if you got to have kids to be saved now, okay? Remember this. Now, check this out. I hope I'm not talking too fast for you. I just don't want to waste a lot of your time, okay? Oh, uh, let's see. Right, exactly, son, exactly. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Praise the Lord. Rishel, shalom, my sister. Shalom, mispakah. Baruch Hashem. Listen to the word here. I suffer not a woman to teach. This is Paul talking. Nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. People of God, listen. Listen. Paul is no fool. Paul is very wise here. He said, I don't allow a woman to be the primary teacher is what he's saying. He's, and the reason why I say that is because you don't have babies at church. Why is he talking about women teaching? And then he's talking about Adam and Eve. And then he's talking about who got deceived. And then he's talking about having babies. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I mean, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Julie, put that in there for me. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 through 15. All right? So he's talking about um, a married situation. He's talking about a home situation. Tasso, thank you, son. Order. He's talking about a marriage situation. And the reason why I know, look what he said. Let the woman learn in silence without subjection. And he said, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. The word teacher did his And he said, to use authority over a man, but to be in silence, or to be reverent, or to have a silent spirit. He said, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if she continue in faith, charity, and holiness with sobriety. Okay? Now, I don't allow women to teach, nor usurp authority over the man. Now, the word usurp, very interesting word. The original word for usurp is often T-O. Hear this, people of God. This will help you. Often T-O. I don't allow a woman to teach, nor to usurp. Often T-O. The word often T-O is a physical word. It means to touch with the hands. And the Aramaic is, it reads very different in the Aramaic. The Aramaic says, I, Paul says, I don't allow women to teach, nor use their body to get the ability or the authority to teach. Feel that. Thank you, Julie. I don't allow women to teach. Neither do I allow women to use their body to get the authority to teach. Often teal or usurp means to take that which is yours by use of your body. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me tonight. Don't take authority by using your body. What does that mean? That means woman of God. Let me break it down and make it plain to you. Woman of God, if you don't get your way with your husband, you don't close the cookie jar. You don't shut down the candy store. You don't close the mall. Come on. You're going to close the mall because you can't have your way. You're going to close the cookie jar because you can't have your way. You're going to shut down the candy store because you want to be the authority in the home. Ouch. Did I say that? Y'all rewind that and delete that part. But that's what usurp means. It means to take by use of your body. So Paul is talking in the domestic situation. This ain't a church situation. This is a domestic situation. That's why he brought up having babies. That's why somebody said, what's going on here? You just came in late. You got to go back, Lillian. You got to go back, Lillian. And you got to start from the beginning, okay? You got to start from the beginning of the video. I can't rewind it for you. All right, I love you, Lillian. Start from the beginning, okay? Now, he's talking domestic, domestic situations here. Domestic situations here. That's why he's talking about having babies. And the word saved, she should be saved in childbearing. That word saved, the Greek word is sozo. Yeah, I thought about him, Pastor Montgomery. I thought about him. I said, I'm not going to call his name, but I thought about him. Hallelujah. So the word saved here is sozo. 
Now, salvation is soteria. So Paul ain't saying that a woman can be saved or receive salvation by having kids. The word sozo means to be safe. That means God will safeguard you and keep you protected while having kids. Not salvation. Salvation is soteria. That's when you get saved and give your life to the Lord. Okay? All right. So now, let's read one more verse. And I'm almost done, people of God. I'm trying not to hold you all up too long. Let's go to 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 3, Julie. Julie, you with me? Thank you, cuz. I'm going to explain this because some of these women might take those words the wrong way. <laughs> all right, cuz. I, I, I'm doing my best. Hallelujah. Doing my best, cuz, cousin Velma. All right, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. You got me, Julie? Julie, Julie is my transcriber here. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Let's read this. I'm almost done. I got one more verse after this and we'll be done. Don't want to hold you guys too long. All right. In 1 Peter chapter 3, because you notice in the, in, the, in the old churches when I got saved, when I first got saved, holiness was a message to women only. Holiness wasn't a message for men and women. Some of y'all remember those days when holiness was a message for women. You can't wear makeup. You can't wear no pants. Don't you have your toes out? Uh, what else? You can't wear no earrings. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Can't have your shoulders out. What else? It was all for women. Your dress got to be long down to your ankles. Holiness was a message to women. It was not a message to the church. It was to women only. Thank you, Julie. First Peter chapter 3. Let's read it. Likewise, you wives, be subjection to your own husband. The word subjection there is hupotasso. It's a military word. I don't want to mess with that right now. And that if any obey not the word, he may without the word be won by the chaste conversation of the wife. Now notice the Bible said, who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find a virtuous woman? Oh my God, that's powerful. Who can find a virtuous woman? I wish I had time to explain that. I'm going to give you a little bit of it, just a very, very little bit. All right? The scripture says, likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. If any obey not the word. It didn't say if your husband is unsaved. It said if he obey not the word. So you got a lot of saved men who are husbands who don't obey the word. They ain't talking about sinners here only. It's talking about anybody who does not obey the word. Feel that, people of God. So he says, verse 2. 1 Peter 3, 2. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, who's adorning? Hear this, people. Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning. Platting of the hair. Wearing of gold. Putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Hold on. Remember, remember Psalms, or what is the Psalm? No, Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman, the scripture everybody wants to be familiar with. Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman. What made that woman virtuous? Notice what God didn't say. Let me tell you what God didn't say. The scripture said that the virtuous woman, the scripture said her price is far above rubies. But let me tell you what it didn't say. It didn't say what the price was. It just said the virtuous woman is far above rubies. Uh, Pastor James Montgomery said, do I speak Hebrew? You know, I've been told that before that I do. I don't think I do, but I've been told that I speak Hebrew fluently. I've been doing it for so long. I don't know. So now, um, it didn't say what the price was of the virtuous woman. However, the scripture plainly says, the scripture plainly says that this woman here to let it not be the adornment of platinum hair, wearing gold, putting on of apparel. Now, look, back in my day, they would teach this and say that this scripture proved that women couldn't dress up. They couldn't put stuff on. They couldn't do this or they couldn't do that. Well, read the whole verse. What the last part of verse three say? First Peter 3 and 3 says a woman can't put on apparel. You know what apparel is? Apparel, what? Apparel is clothes. Hemation in the Greek. Hemation is apparel, anything you put on your body. So if a woman can't wear gold, if she can't plait her hair, if she can't wear gold or plait her hair, guess what? She can't wear clothes either. How about that message? Oh, I get the church packed out now. All the women got to come to church naked. According to the scriptures, oh man, we're going to pack out overnight. We're going to pack out overnight. The address to our church is 1711 West University Drive in Tempe, Arizona. Oh, it's going to be packed next week because women are not allowed to wear clothes. I'm just quoting scripture here. If you're going to say that a woman can't plant her hair and she can't wear gold, then she can't wear clothes either. Hallelujah. Peep that, people of God. All right, let me stop. Let me stop. One more verse. One more. But if you keep going here, it talks about the woman being the weaker vessel. The weaker what? Vessel. Not weaker in spirit. 
Her physical body is weaker than yours. Not her spirit, the weaker vessel. Then it says this. Man, I'm going to get technical. Then it says, look, man, if you don't honor your wife, if you don't honor her, your prayers are in the ceiling. Your prayers ain't in heaven, brother. Your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. Your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. If you're not honoring your wife, like the Bible said, what verse is that? That's verse 7. Put that in there, Julie. First Timothy, uh, First Peter 3, 7. Likewise, your husband, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto them as the weaker vessel, not in spirit, outwardly, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So if you ain't honoring your wife as the weaker vessel, and the word vessel is just skius. In the Greek, you say skius for vessel, and it means outward physical body, the soma. And, and that just means that her physical body is weaker than yours. That's all it means. If you don't honor her as such, the Bible says your prayers are going to just hit the ceiling. They're not going to heaven. All right, last verse. I got to get out of here. Last verse. Let's go to the last verse. Acts chapter 8. This is it, people of God. Last verse. I love you. Hey, sis, my sister Robin, my baby sister. Last verse here. Okay? Acts chapter 8. You with me, Julie? We're going to go to Acts chapter 8. This is our last verse, and I'll be done. I don't know how long I've been on. I'm trying not to be too long. This is the longest one I've ever done. I'm sorry, y'all, for taking so long, but this needs to be explained. All right, we're going to go to Acts chapter 8. This is my last verse for tonight. Acts chapter 8, we're going to start at verse 1. Now, I want you to hear this, read, and follow me hermeneutically. Follow me. Uh, hey, Angelia. Bless you, Angelia. Love you. Been a long time. No see. Love you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Acts chapter 8. And let's see what the word of God says here. Last verse for the night. Acts 8, we're going to start at verse 1. All right, Julie, type that in for me. Acts 8, verse 1 through 4. Acts 8, verse 1 through 4. That's where we're going. Let's read. Y'all follow with me. Acts chapter 8. The Bible said that Saul was consenting until his death. It's talking about the death. Y'all know Stephen got up. He preached right after the resurrection. And they stoned him. And the bishop, Haywood, you just got here, man. You got to watch. You got to go back and rewind and watch the preview, man. It's pretty good. You got to start it from the beginning. Bishop Haywood, shalom, my brother. Shalom, Miss Picard. All right. Acts 8 and 1. Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church. Hear this, people of God. Hear this closely. Hear this closely. There's a great persecution against who? The church. Now, how do you read hermeneutically? Hermeneutically, you read it like this. A great persecution against the church. Where was the church at? At Jerusalem. Okay? They were persecuting the church which was located in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. Everybody was running and they were afraid because there was this guy named Saul of Tarsus. He was killing the saints. He was persecuting the saints. And everybody got scared and started running. All right. And, and, and the whole nation was against these Christianos people, these Nazorian people. They were all against them. All right. Now, verse two, and devout men carried Stephen to his burial and they made great lamentation. That means simply they had a funeral. OK, verse three, listen closely. Put your ear on. Listen closely. As for as for Saul, he made havoc of the church. What did he do? He entered every house and hell in who men and women. What? Read it. Acts 8 and 3. Hailing or grabbing, dragging men and women. Committing who? Them to prison. Who is that them a reference to? Men and women. Hear the word. Therefore they, Acts 8 and verse 4. Therefore they, they who? Men and women that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Ooh. Who went everywhere preaching the word? The men and the, the Bible said men and women went everywhere preaching the word. I rest my case, people of God. If you believe a woman can't preach, I can't help you. Because God is not about gender. God is not about not, the, the Lord is wise, people. The Lord is wise. What do you think would have happened in 1865, January the 1st, 1865, if a black man would have ran for president? What do you think would have happened? You know how far he would have ran for president? About one step. Why? Because every dispensation that ends, the previous dispensation, every dispensation that starts, rather, the previous dispensation that ended is always looming over the beginning dispensation. Thank you, Whitney. 
Deborah was a prophet in the Old Covenant. Junius, some people say Junius was an apostle in the New Testament. She was Paul's cousin. Don't want to mess with that, all right? Now, every dispensation that starts, the previous dispensation is looming. Saul chased David through two books of the Bible. Saul used to be anointed. David is anointed. Those who used to be anointed are always chasing those who are anointed. The used to be anointed people are jealous of the are anointed people. Oh, man. And they want to kill you. You think Jezebel, Jezebel is not a feminine spirit. Jezebel is not a, Jezebel is not a, a, a spirit of sexual spirit. Jezebel is a spirit whether you're a man or a woman. Hey, Dortez, love you, son. Whether you're a man or a woman, the spirit of Jezebel is the spirit that wants to kill the prophetic. The spirit that wants to kill the anointing. You can be you can be a man with a Jezebel spirit. Jezebel wanted to kill the prophets. She wanted to stop the prophetic move. So you can be, Jezebel ain't makeup. You think Jezebel means you got on makeup. No, no, no. Jezebel is a spirit that wants to kill the anointing. That's what the spirit of Jezebel is. All right, people. Been on here for over 30 minutes. I don't like talking more than 30 minutes to you. Rewind it. Start from the beginning. And watch it from the beginning. And let's find out what God has really called women to do. Okay? Let's find out what these women out here running wild. These women don't lost their mind, man. These women running wild. These women running wild. They doing everything. They call themselves pastor and building churches. These women think they can preach. These women are just don't lost their mind. How'd I do? Did I sound good? <laughs> Hallelujah. Saints of God, I love you. I appreciate God's word. I really love God's word. I really do. I love his word. I love the understanding of God's word. And I love you. And I thank you for listening. All right? And I don't know how long I've been on here. Maybe 35, 40 minutes. Just a little bit too long. 41 minutes. Longer than I want to. But I say I love you guys. And go back and watch this video from the beginning. If you know anybody who don't believe in women preachers, send this video to them. Send this video to them. Let them get a rude awakening. And if they got any problems, they can call me. You can inbox me on Facebook and you can call me. Now, if you get into my thread and start talking crazy, I can't help you there. But I will talk to you in private. Oh, yeah, we'll talk to you in private. Yes, yes. All right. Love you, English. Love you. Start from the beginning. All right, Mother Barnett. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Apostle. Hallelujah. God bless you, Deborah, Anthony, all, all of you who listen. I love you all. I thank you all. Until next time, Shalom Mishpachah. Baruch Hashem. Hallelujah. I love you. And I'll see you next time. Shalom.